nothing has changed on the 2015 Honda CBR since the 2013 update, other than the color schemes. This year, Honda adds an all-black option, standard model, to the emblematic Honda Red, ABS model, and has nixed the beautiful red white and blue HRC scheme. The heart of the bike is a 599 cubic centimeters DOHC inline 4 engine. Denso 12 hole injectors and dual stage fuel injection, DSFI, feed 40 millimeters throttle bodies. Power figures have been reported at 98.8 horsepower at 12,510 rpm and 44 foot pounds of torque at 10,150 rpm by Cycle World. A 41 mm inverted big piston fork handles bumps at the front. Rebound and compression damping are located on the fork caps for easy adjustability. Preload is also adjustable, with adjustments made at the bottom of the fork with an Allen wrench. At the rear, Honda's Unit Pro Link HMAS single shock provides preload, rebound, and compression damping adjustability with 5.1 inches of travel. Mounted on the 12 spoke cast aluminum wheels are dual, full floating, 310 mm discs with radial mount, four piston calipers at the front, and a single 220 mm disc at the rear. Topped off with all the fluids, the CBR weighs 410 pounds, at 24 pounds for the CABS model. Honda offers the standard model at an MSRP of $11,490 and the ABS model costs an additional $1,000 for the peace of mind of having foolproof braking. We tested the ABS version. Testing the CBR600RR. I lived with the Honda CBR600RR CABS for just over a month. I had plenty of time to tinker with suspension settings, ride in the canyons, and commute daily, putting more than 1,700 miles on the new bike. I wanted to visit a track with the bike, but with winter being the off-season for track days, availability, and weather were uncooperative. During my first ride on the bike, I was getting way too much feedback and the bike never felt planted or sure-footed. At 170 pounds, before adding gear, I needed to add some preload in order for the bike to handle like a true sport bike. Once set up, I felt confident enough to take the bike out for some canyon runs. I should mention that the preload step collar for the rear shock is inconveniently flush with the bottom of the swing arm, thus making adjustment nearly impossible with a flat spanner wrench. Once I had the suspension adjusted, the first thing I did was to head out to the twisties to assess what the bike was engineered for, speed and lean angle. This time, I decided to take a 120 mile loop from the quiet roads through Castaic to the Angeles Crest Highway and back. Turn in was effortless and faster than my 2008 Honda CBR1000RR. With the suspension a little more dialed, it was quite natural to hit every corner with my knee dragging right over the sweet spot. The foot pegs on the stock rear sets provide plenty of grip and didn't drag easily. Feeling planted on the bike helped me greatly when flicking the 600 from side to side quickly through each successive turn. The Honda really forces you to work on staying in the power band and maintaining smooth throttle control. If you're too low in the rev range, the CBR has very little get up and go, which means I was often staying a gear lower and really had to fine tune my throttle inputs. The throttle can be twitchy when initially opening it from a closed position, and this is most noticeable in first and second gears. This does upset the suspension, so a smooth throttle hand in the lower gears is essential. Commuting on the Honda CBR600RR has its ups and downs. The bike is comfortable to ride, considering it is, after all, a sport bike. A slightly more relaxed geometry, compared to the Yamaha YZF-R6, makes the Ergos a little more city-friendly and similar to the Suzuki GSX-R600R that I rode last year. The bike pulls well, as long as you keep the engine above 7000 RPMs. This 600 is one of those bikes you need to drop a gear to really take off on the highway from a steady throttle cruise. Needing to keep the motor spinning that high made around town riding difficult at times, because I found myself having to ride in a different gear than I would normally choose. 
Finding maintenance throttle in first and second gear is also a bit challenging. The suspension worked well for urban duty. You can't really expect a true sport bike to soak up every city bump, but the overall ride isn't completely rigid, like that of the Ducati Ponygales and Aprilia RSV4S of the world. Out of the box, the bike is set up pretty soft, which would be better for the commuting rider. I found, however, that the stock suspension setup did not translate to a bike that handles well in the canyons. If you plan to do some spirited riding or track days, you will definitely want to enlist the help of your local suspension tuner, if you aren't accustomed to doing it on your own. Fuel mileage varied slightly, depending on whether I was doing reasonably paced, slightly speeding, commuting or spirited canyon runs, really speeding. Overall, I averaged right around the 36 mpg mark and between 126 to 150 miles on a full tank before I was frantically looking for a gas station.